What's going on guys? Welcome back. Moving on to the next video, we're now going to talk about manufacturing flow. Basically the flow for a manufacturing company. I'm going to go into more detail. Couldn't think of a better name to use to be honest. So just decided to go with manufacturing flow. So don't mind the uh, general title. But um, if you remember in a previous video, I went over the three common types of companies you're going to run into in this course, manufacturing, merchandising, service. So we're going to be talking about the manufacturing company again, going into more detail. And if you remember, I gave a flow chart for all three. And so I rewrote the flow chart here for the manufacturing company. So we're just going to be going into more detail for this flow chart. So as a recap, what happens is manufacturing company takes raw materials, puts them in production, you get your product, and then you take your product and you sell it to a customer. So we're going to be going into more detail here. And actually, if you remember the video on product costs and period costs, if you didn't watch that, I highly recommend you do before watching this one. I mentioned that the product costs, they're happening in production in the factory, and there's three types. So instead of production, I'm actually going to write those three types of product costs. So we went over direct materials, direct labor, manufacturing overhead, right? So that there is the, uh, actually, I'm not even going to circle it. That's the production right there, split up into three parts. Now, if you think about it, raw materials out of all three of these, which one does it relate to the most? It's going to relate to the direct materials, right? Direct labor, it's more so an intangible sort of thing. And then manufacturing overhead is basically cost throughout the factory, not directly traced to a product. Raw materials, though, they're directly traced to the product. So the raw materials, I'm going to actually make an arrow to direct materials. <clears throat> so you purchase raw materials and then you take the raw materials and you put them into production. So any raw materials put into production, they become direct materials. And I'm going to go into more detail on the side here about that. Another thing I want to mention is that once you have this production, you have a product. Now there's actually multiple layers here as well. So we're going to go into more detail here. You can actually have unfinished products, right? So if a product takes more than one day to complete, you're not just going to always have a finished product, right? That's ready for sale to a customer. You're going to have some unfinished products that are currently in production and actually Another name for unfinished products, it's called work in process. So when you see them talk about work in process, it's basically on this flow chart here, unfinished products. They're still in production. They're not finished yet. And then you're going to have some finished products. And they're actually not called finished products. They're called finished goods. And then once you have finished goods, then you can make that sale to the customer. Okay, so I took that manufacturing flow chart and sort of put a little bit more detail in here. So the production, it became direct materials, direct labor, manufacturing overhead, the product costs incurred in production. And then in production, you're going to have unfinished products, right, or work in process. And then you're going to have finished goods. And then those finished goods, they're ready for sale. You sell them to the customer. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over each of these steps here on the side in more detail. So let's start off with raw materials here. So this flow from raw materials to direct materials. So what's going to happen is you're going to start off maybe having some raw materials. So let's call it beginning raw materials in the period that you still haven't used for production, but you still have them around because you've purchased them before. And then on top of those raw materials that you already have, you're going to purchase some raw materials. 
potentially as well within the period you are looking at. And then out of this whole stack that you have, you're gonna put some of the raw materials into production, into here. And as I mentioned before, raw materials that go into production, that's basically called direct materials. So let's call it direct materials used. Right, so you start off with some raw materials, you purchase some more raw materials. Some of those raw materials, they're gonna go into production, right? So it's gonna be direct materials used, that's here. And so after that, you're just gonna basically end up with ending raw materials that are gonna be used as beginning raw materials in the next period. So if you remember from accounting, you had like beginning assets and then you had like ending assets, right? On the balance sheet, same type of thing. You got beginning raw materials at the start of the period, you purchase some within the period, some get used, put into production, you end up having some ending raw materials that are gonna be used as beginning raw materials in the next period. So this here, notice we went into more detail for that part of the manufacturing flow, okay? So actually not even this part included, just maybe up to that part to direct materials. And so now what's gonna happen is these get put, these uh, direct materials get put into production and then you're gonna have direct materials, you're gonna have labor working on those direct materials and then you're gonna have manufacturing overhead for the entire factory making the products. Now, before you get finished goods, you're gonna have some unfinished goods, right? Some work in process. So the next flow is you're gonna have some work in process. Let's call it actually beginning work in process. Right, so basically some products that are still being worked on in production. And then on top of that, on top of that beginning work in process, the uh, products that are in production still, you're gonna input some more production. So you're gonna input some more direct materials. I'm just gonna call it DM. So that's actually coming from here, right? So the direct materials used right, that you take out of raw materials, for this period, they go into here, right, into this flow that I'm about to write. So you got some beginning work in process, you input some more direct materials into production, and then you have some more direct labor, some manufacturing overhead, right, so this is all production. Now, some products are gonna be already completed, manufactured, and they're gonna go for sale as finished goods. And so those products, they're basically called cost of goods manufactured, like that. Okay, so this, you wanna think about these as, um, I don't wanna say finished products, uh, yeah, let's just say finished products that are coming out of um, the production, out of manufacturing, right? So some beginning work in process, you're going to add some more new production coming in, the direct materials as part of that coming from the raw materials, then you add some direct labor on that, manufacturing overhead, and then out of production here, some products are gonna be finished, ready for sale. So you're gonna take out some products and that's called cost of goods manufactured. And then over here, you're basically gonna end up with ending work in process. All right, so that's sort of that flow right there. Okay, and then what happens is you take these products, you're gonna have already some finished goods in stock, 
So we're going to have beginning finished goods. Then on top of those finished goods that you already have, you're going to receive some finished goods that are created in that period. So that's going to be this cost of goods manufactured. Right, so that's coming in there. So basically these are the products that are available for sale, right? You could sell these products, they're all done. You had some finished goods at the beginning and you had some finished goods that you're adding within that period, they're called cost of goods manufactured that are coming from this flow over here, from production. This is like the production flow. And so you got some beginning finished goods, you're adding some more finished goods, you have them on stock and then some of those you're gonna sell. Right? So some of those are going to come out of that stock and that's actually going to be your cost of goods sold. Remember, um, I mentioned in the um, product cost versus period cost video that when there's a sale, those products on the balance sheet on the inventory become cost of goods sold. So they flow in the income statement. So this happens when there's a sale. Right, so beginning finished goods, you're adding some more finished goods from production in that period. It's called cost of goods manufactured. And then uh, you're selling some. So they're leaving the stock and basically what you're gonna end up with is ending finished goods. That are going to be beginning finished goods in the next period. And then cost of goods sold, I mean simply that goes on the income statement, so we know revenue. Uh, before I draw this arrow, let me just write. We've got revenue minus expenses. Let's keep it pretty general here. Equals net income. Right, so that there is your general income statement. The cost of goods sold is flowing into expenses on the income statement for that period. Right, so this over here, um, and then you have the sale to the customer, so that's going to happen here. Right, so that's how you take this flow chart and go into more detail. So you start off with the raw materials. From the raw materials, you're going to have direct materials that go into production, right? This whole flow here is for production. So you got some beginning work in process, some products you're already working on. Direct materials go in. You add some direct labor, add some manufacturing overhead to produce them. In production, some products are going to be finished, right? So they're going to leave the factory. So they're leaving production. And then you're going to end up with your ending work in process, ending products that you're still working on. That's going to become beginning work in process in the next period. These products that became finished, they go in stock. So you could think of this as like uh, goods available for sale. Basically what's in the dealership, for example, if you had a car company. So you had some finished goods, you got some new finished goods. Some of those finished goods you sold, they became cost of goods sold and you end up with ending finished goods. And then those cost of goods sold flow on the income statement. The final point I want to make before finishing off this video is I want you to have this flow chart here as a reference for the rest of the questions you're going to be doing in this unit. So I'm actually going to make a handout on this. So I'm going to leave a link. You could print it out. You could have it as a reference whenever you're doing questions. And I want you to keep this exact same order if it made sense to you. Hopefully with my description previously, this whole flow made sense to you. It was intuitive, hopefully. And if it was, I want you to keep it in this order. I don't want you to rearrange anything especially at the beginning when you're getting comfortable with this material. Whenever you get questions, just plug in everything that you need and then just solve for whatever you need to solve for. Sometimes I see certain textbooks, what they start doing is they start rearranging these intuitive formulas in a non-intuitive way. So for example, like cost of goods manufactured, they'll try to isolate for this. So they'll bring this over to the right side, the ending work in process, they'll bring over to the left side 
and then they'll have a formula for cost of goods manufactured, but it's not as intuitive. So they'll have like cost of goods manufactured is equal to, and then this beginning work in process, they won't even have at the beginning. They'll put it in like in the middle. So they'll have like direct materials plus direct labor plus manufacturing overhead plus beginning work in process mining ending work uh, minus ending uh, work in process that gives you cost of goods manufactured now I don't know about you but to me that's not as intuitive maybe if I really like think about that formula I can make sense of it but then I'm just wasting time I'm wasting energy keep this flow here in mind keep it as a reference don't rearrange anything if it made sense to you now sometimes rearranging stuff is going to be inevitable you're going to have to do it there's going to be something called a cost of goods manufactured schedule i'm going to go over that in a future video and basically that schedule is derived from this flow here right and they rearrange a bunch of stuff in the schedule so it's not as intuitive right but it basically derives from this but before we get into that before you start rearranging things i want you to just keep this exact order in mind as a reference whenever you're doing questions. 